Um, hard fought game. Uh, had a chance uh, to win. Had a number of opportunities. Um, proud of our our, our team. Um, played for four quarters. Uh, played with great passion. And uh, um, that's a. I told the guys we're a good team. We just got to believe we're a good team. And we played a really good football team today and went toe to toe with them and uh, had opportunities to, uh, to win. There's a bunch of different momentum swings in, in, in the game. Um, and uh, we knew they were going to make plays and we really thought we could make some plays on these guys. Uh, and ultimately they, uh, they have so many different people that can beat you on offense. We, we struggled in the second half uh, to get them slowed down. We did a couple of times, but not, not enough. And, you know, the first half was played, about like we thought it, we needed it to be played, and that's to uh, control the football, take the clock. Uh, you know, we just needed points on that first drive. Instead, we were down three to nothing, and I thought we should have been up seven to nothing, and a good chance we would have been up seven to nothing. And that um, was one of those things that we were chasing the rest of the game a little bit. But uh, um, yeah, proud, proud of the effort the guys gave, and uh, um, if if we continue to play with that kind of passion and effort, and um, continue to believe and get better during this off week and try to get healed up a little bit. Obviously, we're banged up. Uh, I, I believe we got a great story we can still write. Uh, Chris, that was one of the more aggressive uh, games you've coached, going for a lot of fourth downs, the surprise onside kick. Can you explain why that was your strategy today? Well, I told the guys uh, that we believed in them, and I needed to believe in them even more uh, as far as I, I told Mess, I told Joe throughout the week, we need to be aggressive this game because they have such a great offense uh, that we need to be aggressive. And I also thought we could move the football against these guys. I really thought that we would, we would with Skyler playing, be able to throw some balls, be able to complete some things, be able to run the football. And so I, I don't know which calls you're thinking of from the fourth down standpoint. I just thought we could execute and I believe in our guys to execute. And then we, we had talked about the surprise onside from the start of the game. And then uh, what, I thought it was the opportune time to, to make that call when it got to 27, 17. And I didn't want to give them the ball back. And let's be honest, whether you give it to them at the 45 or at the 20, they're good enough offense to score. Um, and I thought we executed it really well. Chris, what did the officials say on the double review? Uh, I, I, that they reviewed it and missed the review and then went back on the review. I, I really don't know. I'm, I'm frustrated like uh, a lot of K-Staters are out there. Um, didn't get a great explanation, but um, um, they reviewed it and then they didn't see anything. Everything was clean. And then they said they challenged it. So they had another review. Um, I didn't know you could review a review, but evidently you can. And I know you can. Um, but, uh, I, I don't know, that was, must have had some really good evidence that I didn't see. Um, and finally, you mentioned this in your opening comments, but you just never could get the stop after that early turnover. No, we, we, we couldn't, uh, and give their offense credit. They've got tremendous football players and, um, you know, they, they, when we blitzed, they would crack our, our extra player that was responsible for the flat. And then we just couldn't rally and we didn't tackle exceptionally well on defense, but you know, Oklahoma is a really good offensive team that uh, um, can make some plays uh, and make people miss. So uh, something that we have to continue to improve on. Just to follow up on the, the review on the onside kick, is that something you'll, you'll talk to the league about or follow up with the league? I, on? I'm sure somebody will give me a, a shout on, at least I hope they do, but yeah, it, it wasn't once it turned it was kind of out of our hands. I was kind of miffed a little bit like everybody else was, but they must have gone through the proper protocols. You know, you just don't, as, as a head coach, you don't know all the stuff that's going on back in the headquarters. That's what I don't know. And then with Skyler, at, at what point did you guys feel comfortable he was going to be able to go? Uh, this morning. And, you know, he had thrown seven on seven and done some things uh, a little bit each day, but uh, – we wanted to get final clearance and we did this morning and um, he said he felt ready to go when I, when I visited with him this morning. And um, I, I think you guys know it. He's a really good player and he gives us uh, an opportunity uh, to be successful with a six year senior that uh, has played Oklahoma and played him really well. It seemed like today, obviously he was really sharp passing the ball was some of that just being forced to stay in the pocket more because he couldn't run and scramble as much. Uh, I, that's a good question. I'm not sure of that. I, you know, it, 
playing the game back. I know he, he kind of scrambled around a little bit, maybe not outside the hashes, but, you know, scrambled around in tighter spaces and found deuce on some check downs and stuff. But, uh, you know, I not, not seeing what you're seeing, but you're probably right. I don't know how much he got out, outside the pocket. Uh, Coach, you've talked about Landry Weber and his growth recently, specifically his leadership as well. Uh, just wondering if you could put into words his performance today. It seemed like he came up big a few times. Yeah, he came up really big, um, and he's on all four special teams and makes plays on special teams for us um, and made some big clutch catches. And great leader, guy that blocks exceptionally well, uh, just a complete football player. I was excited for him to be able to make some, uh, make a number of plays today. And then uh, could you just talk to us about uh, your, your mindset coming off of the turnover and giving up three points? I mean, it seemed like the offense never really missed a beat. Yeah, or... I thought it was a win, obviously, um, to be able to, to hold them to three uh, off, off the turnover, especially on the, on the drive we had in the first half and I, or the first drive of the game. I think we went for it on one fourth down, if not two during, during that drive, just because we needed to get points that first drive. We thought if we could establish something to get points and if we could get a touchdown, um, it could really jumpstart us. Plus, I had seen teams get a six, seven, eight minute drive in the first drive against them and trying to keep that great offense on the sideline. It just uh, obviously we, we turned the ball over and, and then they get three out of it. What was the hardest thing about stopping Sprinter Rattler today? Uh, the fact that he can beat you in so many different ways as far as, you know, he scrambles uh, and, and we, you know, we try to second contain him because they do enough good things in the run game that you have to pinch your defensive ends. And, and then uh, if you don't, then they gash you a little bit in the run. And then we would second contain him, but they had just three levels of the throw for him. You know, that's just a, you guys know it. I mean, Lincoln's really dang smart and he's got a great plan. And so you know, he's got three different levels on a, on a, on a bootleg pass that he throws and you can take away a couple of them. You can't probably take away all three if you're pressuring and, uh, uh, and, and then the ball is going to be completed. We, we, the one thing we have to do a better job of is tackling in space. Is it, is it tough to swallow that you do have these two games now where Malik gets loose for these touchdowns and you can't take advantage of him? Yeah, well, I mean, that it's, it, we're getting better on special teams. It's, it's going to continue to be an impact for us. And it's been the last two weeks. After the, uh, the overturn uh, onside kick, defense comes out and gets the stop obviously julius gets, gets the uh the int how, how proud were you of the defense that they stood up and didn't kind of let down after a pretty emotional period yeah uh and, and let's give credit to our crowd our crowd was great during that stretch they were great all day uh thanks to the students and the band for coming out and being as loud as they did thanks to all the fans that came out because it was a great atmosphere um and uh we got a lot of life from from that and when we got it to 27 17 and, and don't get the call on the onside kick and then we get the big stop um it was it was a the crowd was into it and and uh, um keep coming to watch these kids because uh we're getting better and uh we're, we're gonna we're gonna break through here did you sense the offense was fired up when they knew Skyler was going to play today? Yeah, there was a little different energy, uh, I, I believe, throughout the whole football team, you know, for him to be out there. Uh, and uh, just because of, of the not only the leadership ability, but his ability to improvise and make some plays uh, and uh, give us uh, probably a lot more balance. And we were able to rush the football against a good team. You know, we were able to rush it for 100 yards. And we always want to be better, but you know, against a good football team to rush for hundred yards and that, that was able to set up a number of our play action stuff. Coach for Oklahoma, did they do anything offensively that kind of surprised you guys? No, not at all. Everything that we had seen with the different personnel groups, they just executed at an extremely, extremely high level. Yeah, Chris, I mentioned, you mentioned uh, them getting you out in space defensively. How much does that negate you, uh, your linebackers? Um, I don't know if it negates them or not. We just, you know, we, we're, we just got to make more plays in space, bottom line, it, whether it's a defensive lineman to a rusher to secondary guys that come up from, from off coverage or, or come up, uh, when the ball's thrown, um, we just got to continue to work on being really good in space and, and getting more hats to the ball and, and being really good space tacklers at times we're good. And at times, uh, we struggled, but. Some of that is Oklahoma's got some pretty good players. I mean, they struggled to tackle Landry and Deuce and Malik and stuff. It, 
tacklings, you know, it's it, the teams that tackle best typically win. And, um, you know, cause there's a lot of terrific skill kids across the country. And a 60 to 40 pass to run ratio. Was that kind of the game plan coming in? Uh, I thought it would be closer to 50, 50, but we found some things that we thought we could execute and Skyler felt really comfortable throwing the football. We were protecting, I thought really well, and we had kids open and that was the fun thing is um, our offense has got a chance to click when, when we can um, push the ball downfield and we were able to push the ball downfield. Chris in the, at halftime, I think they had 41 yards rushing and it looked like they were maybe a little more committed to, to running the ball in the second half. Did that, did that make a difference? Did you think? Oh, uh, well, they, they probably had 41 yards rushing because they never saw the football. I mean, that was part of it. You know, when they started the second half, they had a nice drive. And then we had a, I think a three and out or a four and out or something, and then got another nice drive. Um, you know, the third quarter we knew was going to be difficult because um, they were going to get the ball first and, and they were going to um, be able to make adjustments and they made a nice drive. We, we did everything. We blitzed, we played coverage, we played man, we played zone, we blitzed again, and um, they've got a really good offense. And so they were able to make some plays and, um, you know, once, once they're able to rush the football, then you got to bring guys closer. And we didn't want to give up the home run on the, on the throw. And, uh, we didn't give up that home run, but when you, when you decide you're going to not give up the home run, you're going to give up some underneath stuff, but then that's where it comes down to, we got to be really good tacklers. You mentioned a little bit being able to get healthier leading up to this, but now coming into a bye week do you think that that will help benefit developing Skylar's comfortability a little bit more? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we got so many guys banged up today. We'll have to see what the injury report says, but uh, you know, I, I know that, uh, he, he'll get a week of practice. You know, the wideouts will get some timing with him, but in the same respect, you know, Malik needs to, to rest his body a little bit. Phillip does. Some of the guys that uh, have played an awful lot of snaps for us, the guys that haven't played as many snaps for us, whether it's a, a backup role or even a, a, a scout team guy, we're going to take a hard look at those guys because, as you can see, we're getting beat up. Like defensive line, we lose we lose another one today in, in Bronson. I don't know how long he's out. Felix was uh, out for a while, so we have to keep finding and keep continue to develop guys because once we get off that open week, we're going to have seven in a row, and uh, it, it uh, it's we got to be able to keep them fresh, but we got to be able to find some more bodies that can help us. Chris, with, with Skyler uh, specifically, how close do you feel like he actually is to being back to one hundred percent health? You'd have to ask him that. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Healthy enough that they cleared him to play, uh, and I thought he spun it pretty well today. Did you feel like, given the circumstances of him coming back from this injury and playing number six Oklahoma, this was maybe one of the best games he's ever played since he's been here. Uh, he played really well, uh, and, and he doesn't want to tell you that because we didn't win the game, uh, but. To think that he has not played since whenever it was, the second quarter or first quarter of Southern Illinois, to do what that kid did against that defense and be under duress and know he's not running all over the place and we didn't run options and we didn't run a lot of the, the bypass read zone stuff that we've done with Will. Um, he hung in there and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pitch it around. And uh, I, the kid was on point today. And just to build on that, he took a few hits today. I mean, it seemed like it kind of, as he took those hits, it kind of helped to get him a little bit more comfortable. Is that something that you see from players coming back from injury? Well, we wanted him to get tackled. There's a difference between ta tackled and getting hit. I didn't want him to get hit because we need him for the long haul. Uh, but I know that once he got tackled the first time and got up and he's like, okay, let's go play football. And, uh, you know, if he gets hit during the week, then that's our fault. And he shouldn't get hit during the week because uh, you know, we've got to keep him clean so that he can get his, his timing, some of the timing things back uh, with the guys. But uh, his, the, the, that kid was 29 of 41 for 320 with three TDs against Oklahoma coming off of a, a knee injury. Man, I, if you'd have told me that was his stat line, uh, I thought we had a heck of a chance to win. And we did have a chance to win. And I just wanted to ask about Keenan Gard. We heard so much about in the preseason. Hadn't really done much until today. Do you feel like that big catch could be something to get him going the rest Boy, of the year? Boy, I hope so because he went and got it. And he went and, and went vertical. And that's what he can do is stretch the defense. And I'm happy for him. 
because maybe that'll jumpstart him. You're exactly right. I'm hoping it does because he's a terrific kid. He's a terrific talent. Another local Kansas kid that uh, uh, came up and made a play. And I don't doesn't matter if you make ten plays or one play, uh, you have a chance to have an impact. Were you kind of holding your holding your breath on that uh, fumble return when Skyler's going for the potential tackle? Yeah, yeah, but he's a competitor too. He didn't want to and. Uh, if, he, if he made the tackle, he, he saved his four points. So, um, but no, absolutely. Okay. Thanks everybody.